We press F5, and the following dialog box is displayed. Remember that when we created our knowledge base, we were asked to select the programming language that Genexus would use to generate the programs. The environment that we chose was web, and the language, English. Here, the first time we press the F5 key, Genexus tells us to enter the name we want for our application's database, which will be saved in our computer locally, as well as the name of the database server we've installed. Genexus offers us the option to prototype our application locally or in the cloud. We can see this in the Preferences window, in the Generator, in the value of the Deploy to Cloud property, which in this case is in the No value, indicating that we are prototyping locally. The ability to select a way to prototype is available to us only in the full version of Genexus. In the trial version, we can only prototype in the Genexus cloud, and in that case, it will not be necessary to name the database or the server because they will both be configured automatically. We type DB Travel Agency. In this case, the database server is my machine name, backslash SQL Express and the username for connection. In this case, I'll leave the default value. We click on Finish, and Genexus shows us a report called Impact Analysis. In this report, Genexus examines the impact caused by the new definitions made in the database. Also, it indicates which additions or structural changes need to be made in the database. If we examine the report, we can see that a new table called Customer needs to be created and that this table structure will have the following attributes. As we can see, Genexus will also create an index by customer ID in an automatic way. We will explain this concept later on. Since we want this table to be created with this definition in the database, we click on the Create button. And Genexus starts to create the necessary programs to create the database, which didn't exist and the customer table with this structure in this database. Next, Genexus executes those programs and the database is created. Genexus generates other programs, that is to say, all the necessary lines of code in the selected programming language so that our application does what we want, which is to enter customer details. We're also informed if the result was successful or if there were any errors or warnings. Here we can see the application running. The web browser was opened by default, showing a web page. And here we have a link labeled Customer to run the transaction that we've created. We right click on the link and choose to open it in a new tab. Here's a page that allows us to add, change, and delete customers. Let's enter the details of our first customer. This customer will be identified with number one. He'll be called John. His last name is Smith. He lives on Fifth Avenue. His phone number is 1111. And his email address is jsmith at hotmail.com. Now we click on Confirm. And a message is shown to inform us that the data has been successfully added. Meanwhile, the form is cleared and gets ready to enter another customer. Let's add a second customer. We identify her with number two. Her name is Susan. Her last name is Brown. Her address is 7th Avenue. Her phone number is 2222. And her email address is sbrown at gmail.com. We click on Confirm. And once again, a message is displayed to inform us that the data has been successfully added. Now, to search for John's details, we enter his customer number, 1, and press the Tab key. We see that John's entire details are displayed, and once we are positioned here, we can change some data, such as his phone number. Or we could even delete customer John from the customer record using the Delete button. We can also use the buttons up top to confirm a customer, 
delete a customer, or browse customers by going to the next customer, or the previous one, the first one, or the very last one, or to look for a specific customer using this window. Now that we've seen everything that was automatically generated by Genexus using the customer TRN that we've created, let's go back to the development environment. 